invite for the academic procession. And as they step in, may I request that we all rise on our feet to welcome the academic procession, signaling the commencement of proceedings here at the National Open University of Nigeria. Joining us already here at the auditorium is the incoming Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Femi Peters. Our attention has also been drawn that this special occasion is privileged to have the attendance of a former democratically elected president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is with all great sense of honor that we recognize your presence, sir, former president and commander in chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, Chief Olushegun or Passenger, who is joining us at about now online. The academic procession comprising of teams of the National Open University of Nigeria and with the Vice Chancellor, National Open University of Nigeria. With the academic procession complete, may I at this moment request that we remain standing wherever we are here at the auditorium or anywhere you are globally as you join us virtually. May I request that we sing the national anthem at about now to be followed by the NOUN anthem. All be seated, please. Once again, a very warm good morning and welcome to the National Open University of Nigeria. Welcome to this special academic business where we shall be tapping and relishing from the academic port from a professor 
in his experience uh, throughout his academic uh, journey so far. It is with all great sense of honor this very moment that I bring before our notice some special guests joining us here live and virtually. This 17th inaugural lecture series in the life of the National Open University of Nigeria is privileged this morning to have for the very first time a former president and commander in chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Cholushagun Obasanjo, joining us virtually. It is, can we give him a round of applause, please? It is also with high sense of respect this morning that I recognize the Pro Chancellor and Chairman Council of the National Open University of Nigeria with his team. Uh, permit me to recognize most specially distinguished professor of science and computer education, a man the National Open University of Nigeria is proud of to have as a council chair, Professor Peter Oke Bukwala, OFR, and his members. Please, let's give him a round of applause. With your kind permission, uh, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me very expressly recognize uh, the presence of the Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, a valedictine Vice Chancellor, a Professor of Science Education, and a Professor of Media and Cultural Communication. He is also the Nze Okamewan of Inugu, the Oriakbo of Emevo, and of course, the Alfaharing Kanu. Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Professor Abdullah Uba Adamu. Let me also recognize the two deputy vice chancellors of the National Open University of Nigeria. Of course, they are joining us virtually, one in Ogun State and the other in Sapele in Delta State. Let me recognize the presence of the deputy vice chancellor in charge of academics, Professor Uduma Oji Uduma, and of course, the deputy vice chancellor in charge of administration, Professor Justice Shekofun. It is also my delight this morning to recognize joining us virtually the registrar of the university, Sir Felix Edoka, KSM. Let me also recognize the bosser of the university, also online, Dr. Ernest Odega. Physically present here is the university librarian, Dr. Sally Adam Gambo. It is with all sense of delight that I recognize and welcome you specially the Pro Chancellor and Chairman Council, University of Ibadan, and of course your council members all streaming and joining us live online today. It is my pleasure to welcome also online the former Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Vincent Adu Tenebi. Deans, directors, center directors, uh, friends, family members, and well wishes of the 17th inaugural lecturer, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Today at the National Open University of Nigeria is a special day, a special day indeed as we continue in the series of our inaugural lecture. This one appears to be a special one because it's containing a topic that has to do with the reason why we are locked up some months ago, occasioned by the COVID-19. The 17th inaugural lecture with the topic, Integrated Marketing Communications, IMC, and RICS Communication Tools for Managing the COVID-19 Health uh, Emergency in Nigeria. What a synergy. We'll get to find out how this distinguished academics will deconstruct these constructs in a moment. But permit me at this very moment to invite the chairman of this occasion, the vice chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Abdallah Uba Adamu, for his welcome address. Good morning, everyone. Uh, may I acknowledge with the gratitude the presence of His Excellency. Dr. Olusegun Obasanjo on this forum, as well as uh, my chairman, 
Professor Peter Okebukola at this forum. We are very, very grateful that you have time out of your very, very busy schedules to attend this absolutely wonderful inaugural lecture. This is the 17th inaugural lecture in the university. And it is the eighth inaugural lecture that I will be chairing. I'm very proud of the fact that in five years, we have been able to do eight inaugural lectures, but we need to do more because there are many who have not done their inaugural lectures. Let me make clear up misconceptions. Inaugural lectures are not based on hierarchy or seniority. They are based on those who are ready and willing to do their inaugural lectures. We have a lot of professors in the university who have been professors for a very long time, but they have not bothered to do their own inaugural lectures, believing that we have somebody else has to do it first before they could do it. In academic world, there is no hierarchy in terms of inaugural lecture or in terms of intellectual contribution. If you are ready to do it, we are ready to host you. If you're not ready to do it, then we cannot force you to do it. And therefore, we are, we are very welcome to anyone who wants to do their inaugural lecture. And I urge the university community to please consider the possibility of doubling the number of inaugural lectures in the next dispensation under Professor Olim Pemi Peters. Now, with that, I would like to introduce to the general audience the, <clears throat> the inaugural lecture presenter, Professor Samaila Mande. Professor Samaila Mande is of the Department of Business Administration. He specializes in marketing and communication in the Faculty of Management Sciences of this university. He's a graduate of marketing with interest in public relations from the University of Nigeria in Nuku campus. Professor Mande holds a postgraduate diploma in marketing and MSc degree in mass communication from Benue State University, Mokurdi. He also holds an MSc degree in marketing and an MBA degree in marketing, both from the University of Nigeria and Suka and a PhD in business administration from Ikiminidion University, Okada. Presently, he is the Dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies, coordinator of the now business school at the National Orphan University of Nigeria. He is the Vice President of the Academy of Management in Nigeria. He is an adjunct research fellow at the School of Media and Communication, Pan-Atlantic University, Lagos. He was also the National Secretary of the Academy of Management Nigeria, a faculty member of Nigerian Military School of Public Relations, Boni Cantonment, Lagos, and also a faculty member of both the Nigerian Military School of Medical Sciences, Ojo Cantonment, Lagos, and the Nigerian Army War College in Abuja. He was a former head of the Department of Mass Communication at Gminidion University, Okada, where he also served as the sub-dean, College of Art and Social Sciences. He was also a visiting lecturer at the Kogi State University, Ayingba, Kogi State, and Benson Idaho State University, Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria. He practiced journalism at the early stages of his career with New Swords Communications Limited under the leadership of Mr. Ray Ekpo, Mr. Dan Akbese, and Mr. Yakubu Muhammad. He, was, he has memberships of professional bodies such as fellow National Institute of Marketing of Nigeria, fellow Nigeria Institute of Public Relations, member Nigeria Institute of Management, registered practitioner in Advertising Council of Nigeria, member Institute of Management Consultants, and accredited management consultant of the Center for Management Development. He is also a member of African Council for Communication Education and the Academy of Management Nigeria. He is also currently concurrently serving as a member of the Governing Council of the premier university, the University of Ibadan, and our own National Open University of Nigeria. He has served several com uh, committees within and outside the National Open University of Nigeria. Currently, and the virtue of playing a host to the Secretariat of the Committee of Provost and Deans of Graduate Schools in Nigerian University. Let me now invite Professor Samaila Mundi to the podium to discuss the topic, Integrated Marketing Communication and Risk Communication Tools for Managing COVID-19 Health Emergency in Nigeria. What a synergy. Thank you very much. Professor Bandi, over to you.
in the name of God, the most beneficent and the most merciful distinguished because today my own inaugural is such that the order is in a different dimension. But however, let me start this way. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, distinguished audience in the hall and those other virtual audience, by the grace of Almighty God, I have the honor today, the eighth day in the month of February 2021, to stand before this global audience as a professor of marketing and communication. I am here on behalf of the Faculty of Management Sciences to deliver this inaugural lecture. Today's event is indeed a fulfillment of destiny. I'm grateful to God, at the same time grateful to my Dean of Faculty, Professor Samson Oshoba. Distinguished audience, I'm fully aware, and that is the more reason why, this is an academic ritual, it's an academic tradition. But in my own case, there are distinguished, you know, audience that are there virtually. This is an inaugural lecture that is now being endorsed and supported by the Council of the National Open University of Nigeria. And so I want to thank most sincerely the Chairman of Council, the distinguished Professor of Science Education and Computer Education, Professor Peter Okebukola, and other members of the Governing Council of National Open University of Nigeria here present. The Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, the Registrar, the Bursa, the University Librarian, the Dean and Staff of the Faculty of Management Sciences, these are members of other faculties, Directors of Academic and Non-Teaching Units, Study Center Directors, members of the university community, the great students of now, and of course, the virtual audience. I'm aware that this event has been attended by the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the new president, Ulusegoro Basanja, who happens to be our first PhD in this university. My Lord Spiritual and Temporal, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, I know this is an activity of National Open University of Nigeria. But permit me to recognize my own chairman of council of the University of Ibadan in the WACLEC, who is also virtually online, as well as the vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan. The acting vice chancellor, Professor A.B. Ekola, and of course, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Admin, and other member of council in the university. The Registrar, Mrs. Bumi Falui, I want to thank you for your presence. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. My discussion and topic that we're going to now share with you is having what I will call a content in this dimension. I'm going to have an introduction, and then we'll talk about IMC and risk communication for COVID-19, risk emergency in Nigeria. I'm going to have a historical recap, a historical recap of some of the emergencies in Nigeria. We will talk about IMC, RCC, and Nigeria's COVID-19 control situation analysis. I'll talk about risk communication and community engagements for COVID-19. We'll definitely talk about some theories and models of IMC. COVID-19 and international relations, we'll look at its implications. And we'll also talk about the place of Nigeria after COVID-19. We know what we're going through already. So we're going to look at it, what will be our situation after COVID-19. And then the place, we'll also talk about coming up with some conclusion as well as recommendation that we'll all definitely talk about. Distinguished audience, when I requested and, and the approval was given to me to deliver the 17th inaugural lecture, each time I sleep, I hear one word. When I wake up, 
I hear the same word. On the road, it is still the same one word. If I turn my if I turn, if I turn my radio or TV, I hear the one word, and the one word is coronavirus. I'm gonna ask myself which topic would demand my academic input because inaugural lecture is a situation whereby you have your own special area of research focus, special focus area, which is what makes you unique and distinctive in your academic study. And that is the more reason why I came up with the dimension that I'm going to talk about coming up with research focus area, which indeed will now be towards the dimension of coming up with the conceptualization of the topic. And hence, integrated marketing communications and risk communication tools for managing COVID-19 health emergency in Nigeria. What a synergy. I know you begin to wonder because the terms we're talking about here are different terms. And then when you're not looking at what a synergy. Distinguished audience, you definitely get to know the synergy today. Let me start with some conceptual definition. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to define the following concepts. Integrated, marketing, communications, and synergy. What do we mean by integrated? Integrated is the combination of two or more things in order to become more effective. When we're talking about integrated, the combination of two or more things in order to become more effective. It's not just to bring things together, but basically with the focus of becoming more effective. So what do we mean by marketing? I know that people will begin to wonder, I mean, marketing, marketing, because some people perception marketing is about buying and selling. Marketing is more than that. As a matter of fact, we can't do anything without marketing. Marketing is the activity of said institution and process of creating, communicating, delivering and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. But my own definition of marketing is the art and science of creating, maintaining, and winning friends with mutual satisfaction. Distinguished audience, you need to look at it critically that we cannot do anything without marketing. Because another definition of marketing by the Charter Institute of Marketing UK London, marketing is the management process that is responsible in identifying, anticipating, and satisfying customers' requirement profitably. And to do that effectively, you need to know who they are. The other one that I need to also talk about is communication. The way I talked about marketing, that we can't do anything without marketing, so also we can't do anything without communication. And one of the ways we use communication is to express the procedure or task of using words, sound, pictures, or behaviors to express and share information. As well, we will express ideas, thoughts, and feelings to other people. However, because of the current situation that we are, today, the word communication has expanded to include communication which describes the ways of sending information to people or groups through the use of technology. Distinguished audience, ladies and gentlemen, you can now see that we also cannot do anything without communication in all human endeavor. The next one I'm to talk about now is the synergy. That when I was talking about what is synergy, the synergy distinguished audience here is a mass noun that means the interaction or cooperation of two or more organizations, substances, or the agent to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. For example, the summation below is synergistically possible, even though but mathematically incorrect. But for the purpose of synergy, this is possible. Let me now talk about the historical recap of some of the emergencies in Nigeria. Since the past 10 years, Nigeria has been befuddled with many national emergencies of unquantifiable proportions that challenge the intellectual input of communicators. What are we talking about? is for us to understand about the challenges we've been going through for the past 10 years. This is one of the emergency crises we went through. The 2008 global financial crisis, 
which was caused by deregulation in the financial industry. The financial experts are fully aware of this development. We went through that in 2000, 2000, uh, 2008 global financial crisis. Aside from that one, you are fully aware about the emergence of Boko Haram. The Boko Haram is also another emergency that we're never expecting. All of a sudden, we now saw it, and we're still battling with it. The 2012 national flood disaster is also one of the challenges that we also face one of the emergencies. And then of course, the one that is now a, 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 a greater one, the rise in farmers had is clashy. Distinguished audience, you are fully aware of this emergence I'm now talking about. Then this last one is the one that is now having some dimension with our topic of discussion. And that is the COVID-19 which is the global pandemic that we're now facing. There is the word here, IMC. It's the way of looking at the whole marketing process. But let me now talk about what we mean by IMC. I know that marketing and marketing scholars are there virtually. And then of course, people in mass communications are also there virtually. Other scholars in business. IMC is a way of looking at the whole marketing process from the viewpoint of the customer. But one thing I tried as much as I can to let people understand, for the advertising scholars, advertising professional scholars, we have what we call the ATL. What do we mean by the ATL? The ATL means above the line media. And then the BTL means the below the line media. ATL has some of its own elements and the BTL also has some of its own elements. The combination ATL plus BTL equals to IMC. Is the mathematical expression at this level now. ATL, the elements of above the line media and the elements of the below the line media combined together synergistically give us what we're now talking about integrated marketing communication. When we talk about the above the line media, we're now talking about advertising, public relations, branding, packaging, graphic designs, marketing access promotion. And then when we're talking about that below the line media, we're not talking about these other media that do not pay commissions at all. We're talking about stickers, banners, leaflets, and flyers. Bringing them together in your own campaign messages is the dimension of IMC. There are other things we're going to talk about as we move on, but I needed to give you this as an interview. Leo Bordet is one of the early scholars and early professional and uh, uh, great men in the field of advertising. Now, the definition of IMC, David Picton, which he did a survey of the various uh, uh, definitions of IMC, that was in 2020. And he said, IMC by several others depicts the process which involves the management and organization of all agents, of all agents in the analysis, planning and implementation. What are we talking about these all agents? These all agents are the ones I talked about to you the other time when I was talking about the ATL and the BTL. So those elements that are at that various angle are all the agents we're now talking about. So integrated marketing communication assessment profile, which is IMCAP, and we try to say that at this level, it represents both the positive synergistic possibility of IMC as well as the negative, the functional aspect that can be experienced if integration is poor or even non-existent. No doubt about it. The COVID-19 pandemic is going to impose a lot of monetary and fiscal measures on the Nigerian economy. IMC and risk communication for COVID-19 now. Distinguished audience, after witnessing the recession in 2016, growth in Nigeria's gross domestic product has remained below population growth. This means that the citizens have poured up per capita income between 2017 and 2019. No sooner had the economy started showing signs of recovery than the COVID-19 pandemic struck and now reversed the progress. We're in the process of getting out of it. But all of a sudden, COVID-19 came, and then that's where we're now going back to where we're coming from. The IMC, RCC, Nigeria's COVID-19, the control situation analysis. Here, we're now talking about marketing, communication, should be a careful blend, a careful blend and application of the major promo tools. 
when we are talking about promo tools here, we're not talking about promotional tools. And these promo tools are advertising, public relations, publicity, sales promotion, personal selling, internet and social media in a commercial or commercial campaign to either enhance sales of a product, service, or promote public acceptance of a social cause. Distinguished audience is to tell all of us that marketing is not about this, the selling of the physical product. But marketing is also about the selling of ideas, the selling of issues, and these are very, very critical. Integrated marketing communication, according to Clo and Bach, he talks about marketing communication is about putting all the tools, avenues, and sources within the company or an organization in order to achieve a seamless situation with maximum, to maximize the impact on an end user at the minimal cost. And so what are we talking about in that angle? If you look at the diagram at the other end, we're now talking about the combination of activities of the social media, multimedia, email marketing, print media, search, website, social share, video, and all these things put together towards achieving the best in whatever kind of campaign that you have to do. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, in our context, therefore, it is the expert of all marketing communication tools, techniques, strategies, and media, both orthodox and traditional, into a harmonious accord for an effective and successful dissemination of utility information to all citizens and stakeholders in the Nigerian project. And for this, we're not talking about for us to do this, we need to do that in order to carry all citizens along and optimize the skills and potential for successful post COVID recoveries in all sectors. So we're now talking about all of us need to be involved in ensuring the best for the system. To do this effectively, distinguished audience, the input of practitioners in marketing, practitioners in marketing, I'm talking about the, the, the National Institute of Marketing of Nigeria, the public relations as uh, practitioners, advertising, branding, direct marketing, graphic designs, packaging, promotion, publicity, sponsorship, sales promotion and online marketing is needed as a crack marketing communication team. So we needed to have them. So the application of some of these selected IMC two can serve as a veritable public relations reputation management strategy for restoring public confidence in the country's leadership and messages that ensue from them. Like believing in and observing the COVID-19 preventive protocol. Some of us have different perception, different view about the various instructions being given to us because of the way and manner we see things. So what ought to be done is for this professional, different angle, to be invited together so that a campaign, a message can be well designed so that the audience, the citizens can now have sense of uh, believing it. Based on this observation, distinguished audience, out of the hundreds of IMC theories and models, I have selected just a few the special responsibility theory, development communication theory, social learning theory, and the public relation excellence model as quite appropriate for our discussion on the national context in handling emergency in Nigeria. The social responsibility theory, which was propounded by William Schramm, Seabed, and Theodore Patterson in their book, Four Theories of the Press, which stated that, that pure libertarianism is antiquated, outdated, and obsolete. The social responsibility propounded by Wilbur Schramm is also very, very important because it's all about the theories of the press. So the essence, what we are trying to talk about in that area is to say that the role of the responsibility of the journalist is for him to try as much as he can, that in as much as he's trying to understand about the theory of pro promoting total press freedom, but in manner that demands social obligation of responsibility on the journalist so that you don't report things that will not be favorable in your own society. Then we have development communication. The development communication theory, I know that the communication scholars are there, are taking note of this situation that we're now talking about. Development communication engages all stakeholders in the country and policy makers by establishing conducive environment, assessing risks and opportunities and promoting information exchange to create positive social change via sustainable development that will mutually beneficial to both government and the government. Then the social learning theory. The th social learning theory propounded by Alan Badura in, in 61, the theory is emphasizing that 
Behavior is learned from the environment through the process of observation and learning, or rather than people imbibe and display the behavior exhibited within the environment. So it's important for people to learn by observing, imitating, and modeling the behavior of others. So it's very, very important that we also take note of that as we move on. Now, the public relations excellence theory. This theory believes in a two-way communication. The theory believes in two-way communication, which insists that government, government, governmental agencies, institutions, and organizations must use communication to negotiate with members of the society, stakeholders, and their publics, resolve conflict, and promote mutual understanding and respect between them and those stakeholders in publics. So in other words, whatever kind of situation you find yourself, is to try as much as you can to take note of all this we are now talking about. A two-way communication is better than the one-way communication. Because the one-way communication is take it or leave it communication. And so we know the effect when communication is one way. But the two-way communication advocated by the public relation excellence theory is the two-way symmetric communication. According to Grunig and Hunt, there are two types of communication in public relations, asymmetric and symmetric two-way communication. The two-way asymmetric public relation also calls scientific persuasion, generally focusing on the short-term attitude change and incorporate lots of I mean, feedback from target audience. The drawback of this is that it is used to primarily hoodwink and win the target public to come accept a government organization viewpoint rather than using dialogue to understand other parties. So for communication to be effective, it has to be two ways so that at least there has to be that room of engagement. However, the two-way symmetric public relation on the other hand relies on honest and open two-way communication and mutual give and take achieve via dialogue rather than one-way persuasion. One of the key takeaways from excellent public relations principle is that government should, lead, should, should behave in socially acceptable ways by being proactive and be prepared for emergencies or crisis before they happen. So it's important you do that. Let's talk about the IMC framework of modules. Three modules are carefully and briefly described in this angle here. The first one is the IMC process model, and then the second one is the IMC robustic planning model, and then the third one is the wheel of IMC model. About these models, there we have what we call to have this effective. We have what we call the four E's, the four C's, and the four S of IMC. Integration is not easy to achieve, but when it is achieved, the four E's, the four C's, and the four S creating the demonstrable benefits of integration. What are these four E's? Four E's of IMC is that for any kind of communication that we have to do, we have to have the element of enhancing, economical, efficient, effective. At the forces level, we are saying that the different communications are logically connected and added to one central idea. So in other words, the, first, the communication must be coherence, consistency, continuity, complementary. So at this complementary level, we are not talking about messages as synergistic, and the value of campaign is greater than if each of them will go separate ways. The four S, synergistic, like I told you, the four plus two phenomenon, which is five, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So the message needs to be synchronistic, timed in appropriate sequence, and of course, symbiotic, mutually dependent, but benefiting from uniqueness and independence of individual elements. And then of course, the last one is that the message has to be systemic. Let me now talk about the role of social media and Nigerian youth in risk communication. Social media networks, sometimes called relationship networks, Help people and organizations connect and share information and ideas with each other online. And that's the era where we are today. Since the advent of the mobile internet, social media networks have become the engine that define and shape nearly every aspect of modern life. From searching information to reading news, to sharing ideas, to sharing videos, photos, and nurturing social relationship and experience. 
The Nigerian youths are dominant players. They are dominant players in the social media and social network field. And thus, that, their ideas could be harnessed to play a pivotal role in making a difference in the management of risks and emergencies in society. And how can we do that? And that's the more reason why, because you can see their involvement in the various social media networks, such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and then LinkedIn and all that. Instead of filtering their lives away in idle social media gossips and fake news, what is expected is that a deliberate national capacity building of the Nigerian youth as communication for soldiers during national emergencies for enhanced socioeconomic development should be, could be initiated. But that will only happen when there is dialogue, when there is symmetric communication, the relation between the government and the government, where you now allow, you try as much as you can to understand the needs of one of the audience and you put them together so that you come up with the parameters of moving together. So our government and policy makers need to do more in engaging Nigerian youth in helping build a disaster uh, resilient society and community, especially towards arresting the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's one thing that we can do. The youth could be made to turn their social media versatilities into e-business opportunities and use it to move into the global marketing arena. And last, talk about risk committee and the, uh, the uh, RCC for COVID-19. Risk communication and communication engagements. At this level, we'll talk about information, engage, and be accountable. So for what you have to do, you all have to try as much as you can to ensure that a proactive communication and promotion of a two-way dialogue with communities, the public, and other stakeholders in order to understand their risk, perception, behavior, and existing barriers speaks very important. And it is through that you will now be able to understand them. So we have people in the health sector here. And thank God we have a uh, professor of uh, public health uh, in, in our system. So one activity that marketing communication plays here is what we cover public health communication, public health marketing of ideas. So what we're talking about now, we can also design a campaign for Nigerians to understand about the dimension of how those various menes and other social issues can now be effectively marketed. When you inform audience and all that, the next thing you do is to get them, you have to engage them. So one of the challenges that we have is that you don't just inform people, you have to transport to engage them. It is when you engage them that they now have a sense of belonging, that they will now understand what you are talking about. And then they will also now transport as they can to believe, to have believe in you. And to do that effectively, what are we supposed to do? We have to ensure that all groups in society, including vulnerable and at risk population, are identified reached and involved in COVID-19 prevention and control measures. So we have to engage them. After engaging them, so we have to trust much as to be accountable. So how do we now, how do we come up with being accountable? We have to develop a monitoring plan to evaluate how well the objectives of RCC plan are being fulfilled. This will be in line with the set of objectives and outcomes of the RCC and then trust much as for us to now see how we can move on. So you have to establish a baseline so that at the end of the day, you now understand how the whole campaign and the messages are being affected or being implemented as we move on. COVID-19 and international relations. So we have to look at it. Are there international relations that I mentioned in COVID-19? Of course, scholars in international relations are also having their own dimension in that aspect. No doubt about it. The novel coronavirus stigmatization, xenophobia and discrimination being reported in some nations of the world, against citizens of all the nation is condemnable and capable of igniting international and diplomatic relations, bad blood in global community. On the 30th January 2020, the World Health Organization issued a statement advising all countries to be mindful of the principle of Article 3 of the International Health Regulation, which the World Health Organization says a caution against promoting stigma or, discrim or discrimination. So it is not acceptable when I mean, uh, and, uh, uh, a pandemic will not be associated to a group of people or to a nation. Now, what is our own Nigeria's uh, relation with uh, uh, COVID-19 COVID and Nigeria's relation with World Health Organization? Now? There's no doubt about it. Nigeria's relation with the World Health Organization has remained cordial since the advent of COVID-19. This 
is why the officer in charge of one organization in Nigeria, Dr. Clement Peter, on 20th February 2020, commended the federal government of Nigeria about its effort over the COVID-19 management in the country. The World Health Organization said it has since then been working harmoniously with the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, whom it recognized as one of the best control centers in Africa to provide support on how to control the COVID-19 spread in the country. This is a plus for the nation's international relations call. And of course, that's something that uh, is something that enhances our level of uh, diplomacy. COVID-19 and Nigerian relations with China, because I'm fully aware of the kind of situation we went through at some time ago, with the spate of negative mass media and social media reports about the maltreatment of Nigerians in China, due to coronavirus, Nigeria's relation with China was jolted in the wrong direction. This was manifested by the Nigerian Foreign Affairs Minister, Geoffrey Onyema, invitation of the China's amb ambassador in Nigeria, Zhu Pinjian, to communicate the country's extreme concern over the allegation of its citizen being maltreated in China. Consequently, Onyema called for an immediate intervention by the Chinese government to curtail the stigmatization. Then COVID-19 and Nigerian relations with other cooperation with other, uh, with other nations. COVID-19, no doubt, has implications in Nigerian relations with other governments in the world. This is because it is a battle that demands the cooperation of every country to win. The president of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, said this much in May 2020 that only a collective international approach will mitigate the devastating effect of COVID-19 in the world, adding that national, regional, and global strategies will be required to tackle the pandemic, which he said have ravaged humanity and caused unprecedented devastation to the well-being of people, their livelihoods, and the global economy. Still on the need of the global cooperation to defeat COVID-19 pandemic. The U.S. Assistant Secretary of the State for Education and Cultural Affairs, Mary Royce, also advised countries to ensure that COVID-19 does not damage international student relations amongst nations, because international student, international student education make colleges and universities more dynamic for all students. The Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, also warned that COVID-19 should not be allowed to promote racism against people in the world, they should rather see to the strengthening of cooperation. The Italian president, Sergio Mattarella, also said that friendship and peace amongst nations in fighting the coronavirus are fundamental in international relations and universal peace. He emphasized that the world needs peace and inclusion to win the war against COVID-19. The place of Nigeria after COVID-19. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, one may wish to ask, what is the place of Nigeria after COVID-19? So let us start looking at it clearly. What, where are we going to be? I will attempt to answer this question under the following subhead. The post-COVID-19 economic order, the post-COVID-19 social order, post-COVID-19 political order. For the economic order, the government of President Muhammadu Buhari, mindful of the forecasted Negative consequences of COVID-19 on the global, e global economy has, through the Central Bank of Nigeria, announced a 50 billion naira uh, facility to support micro, small, and medium enterprises that were affected. So this is aimed at saving the MSMEs in the country from total collapse due to COVID-19 pandemic. Still on the economic order, the Central Bank of Nigeria also announced a credit relief to businesses in Nigeria affected by the coronavirus pandemic. One trillion naira CBN support for the manufacturing and other key sectors of the economy to counter the fallout of the coronavirus. 100 billion naira carved out as a loan to the pharmaceutical and other healthcare authorities to contain the spread of the coronavirus. The CBN also approved a one year moratorium on all principal debt repayment from March are reduced to 5% from 9%, the interest rates all in an attempt to see how we can have a better support and a way of uh, managing the COVID-19. Distinguished audience, I know that yes, all this sounds sweet to our ears, but we all seated here know that they really, it's not really not about good policies, 
What has been our major problem is the implementation of some of these rolling policies. Yes, quite all right, those things have been there. But the key issue is about its implementation. Notwithstanding what the emergency preparedness and issues management master plan is the government putting in place to ensure that the implementation or what we call the Nigerian factor that has in the past manifested itself sometimes as money swallowing snakes, which you are fully aware. Then we have the rats, chimpanzee, fire disaster, or even human beings do not swallow the already a mark of the stimulus form. You are fully aware of the kind of challenges went globally went after some times and all this, the, the palliative. You, you are fully aware of the battles of the palliative and all that. So it's important we take note of all as we move on. Now the social order. COVID-19 aftermath is going to astronomically increase unemployment and poverty in the country. No doubt, so we just have to be ready and start thinking you know, about that. This will have some dear social consequences like increase in armed robberies, kidnappings, child thefts, prostitution, out of school children, and many more. In 2019, Nigeria has surpassed India in terms of the number of people living in abject poverty and end the unenviable appendage of the poverty of I mean, the, the poverty capital of the world. Lagos State Government banned use of tricycles and bikes through about 14,000 bikers and over 40,000 tricycle operators into unemployment. Some stranded Nigerian youth hustling for livelihood abroad have also been brought home over COVID-19 pandemic. All these idols and more will have other social consequences for the country. Now in the political order, it has been predicted that the COVID-19 pandemic will lead the country into a recession and consequently was an unemployment rate, heightened uh, the, uh, the already bad insecurity problems and increased social crimes and disorder in the country. This will only lead to increased political tension. This is because nothing is more difficult than ruling a hungry, angry, and jobless people. The government has to be prepared for this by instituting proactive issues management, crisis management, and emergency preparedness measures to nip such in the band. A way of concluding, in this inaugural lecture presentation, I have identified four concepts which combine together to make up the topic to include integrated marketing, communication, and synergy. I also gave a simple definition of the topic of the lecture to mean ensuring that all forms of communication and messages are carefully linked together or integrating all the promotional tools so that they can work together in harmony accounted for a historical record for this emergency as they had occurred in Nigeria from 2008, world economic crisis to the 2020 COVID-19 global pandemic and the impact of COVID-19 on Nigeria. I also discussed integrated marketing communication and risk communication for COVID-19, listing the various theories explored to support the presentation, including social responsibility theory, development communication theory, social learning theory, public relations excellence theory, and risk communication theories and emergencies. I also emphasize the role of social media and Nigerian youth in risk communication, as well as risk communication and community engagement for COVID-19. In proffering solution to pandemic, I discussed IMC risk communications and community engagement for COVID-19. Finally, the paper presented a synergy of COVID-19 in Nigeria and the international relation with the World Health Organization, China and other nations of the world, showing the place of post-COVID-19 pandemic as it affects economic, social, and political orders. And for that, I decided to have some recommendation. So that at the end of the day, the recommendation should not be something that we are now going to implement by the various agencies, bodies, and our policy makers. One recommendation is to prevent COVID-19, people must be informed through an integrated marketing communication multimedia strategy to understand the inherent health risks that the virus exposes them and their loved ones to. So it is not just for us to just leave it the way we're, the way we're handling it now. The second recommendation 
through a communication and dialogue should be employed in reaching out to all the stakeholders and the populace, populace in all ramification and at all levels of the required health protocols against COVID-19 through multimedia channels and throughout the response. The Nigerian government should, third, the Nigerian government should ensure that poor and most vulnerable in society, people living in informal settlements without access to basic services, marginalized sections of the population, such as persons living with disability and homeless, they will also have to try as much as you can to be attended to. There should be a global international approach to mitigate the devastating effects of COVID-19 using global strategies to prevent, to prevent unprecedented devastation that to the well-being of people in their, their livelihood and of course the global economy. The country must establish an emergency preparedness master plan for proactively addressing and containing all the envisaged and forecasted, uh, and forecasted negative post-COVID-19 consequences. We must ensure that COVID-19 does not damage international student relations amongst nations because such international action make colleges and universities more dynamic for all students. Seven, COVID-19 should not be allowed to promote racism against people in the world, but should rather see to the strengthening of cooperation, in friendship, peace, and inclusion amongst nations in fighting the coronavirus are fundamental in international relations and the universal peace. To effectively contain the post-COVID-19 economic uh, consequences, there is need for a much more investment and much more diversified, inclusive, and robust private sector-driven economy. That is also very, very necessary. Number 10, again, for a sustainable containment of the post-COVID-19 economic uh, consequences, the government must avoid idle hands by carrying, out all, carrying all the populace along through increased public awareness and enlightenment campaigns, the public awareness and alignment campaign should also be geared towards awakening jobless youths, interest in agriculture, or increased food security in the country. In the post-COVID-19 business era, there will be need to diversify the country's revenue base from oil so, so that we don't continue to be emphasized on oil all the time. 12, we need to also reduce unemployment and poverty in the post-COVID-19 socioeconomic era. It is imperative that policymakers provide relief packages tailored particularly to Nigerians and vulnerable citizens and not to keep it and hide it for political campaign in 2023. 13. Finally, all Nigerian citizens must realize that farming holds the greatest aid for the survival and growth in the post-COVID-19 era. Government at all levels should provide all the necessary support and security to farmers and the farming value chain as the present situation where farmers and harder clashes are not favorable at all to growth and development. As part of this measure, the implementation of the National Livestock Transformation Plan should be faithfully implemented without delay. A situation whereby we're having hardest clashes in various parts of the country. In the, in, in the Southwest, we have the Abotakus and then the Igbohos, which are now in action. And then we have it all in various areas. And then in the north, we have what they call the Shege Kafasa. And of course, not having various groups at all in the, we are in the south, we have the Abota. So tomorrow, other people will now be coming. We have the Abasus and other one. So the most important thing is that we, instead of having this regional you know, group or whatever, we ought to try as much as we can to have a nationalistic view, a nationalistic focus, a nationalistic direction, so that at the end of the day, the sense of inclusion, uh, inclusiveness is key. And the, the recommendation of the National Transformation you know, Plan, which has just been approved by uh, uh, the, the Vice President, Yemi Oshiba, and all that. So that should now be implemented effectively so that the various stakeholders that are there, state government and federal governments and other host communities will now have their own role to play. It's very, very important because without peace and stability, we can no longer go to our farm. On a daily basis, you watch it on the television and radio, where women are crying, men are crying, they are being killed, they are being maimed, they are being raped. And this is what they are supposed to do because that's their own mainstay. So government should do everything possible to make sure that yes, farming, if agriculture is going to be, this, uh, be given the support that is desired. Acknowledgement. First and foremost, I give Almighty Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glory for my life and for all he has done for me. In the course of my career, several individuals have, in one way or the other, contributed to making my life journey a most rewarding one. 
I hereby say a very big thank you to my dear parents, late Malam Sabayla Aguba Ejibo of blessed memory from Ojogba, the radio district in the Kina local government Koji State. My dear mom, Malam Halima, Halima Sabayla Aegi Omale, they showed love to me in a way that motivated me to put in my best into my studies. My gratitude also goes to my siblings, Abdullah Samayla, Ibrahim Samayla, Lami Samayla, Laraba Samayla, Musa Samayla, as well as Mariam Samayla. I want to appreciate and thank you all for all that you have done. I also want to thank my in-laws, Malama Hadiza Gombo, Aisha Mustafa, Rahmat Bala, and Sadia Aliyu for giving me a good wife whose companionship has been conducive for productivity. I'm thankful to my uncles, aunties, and cousins for their support, notably Enoch Ichapi, Odekina, Ayahaya Ichapi. Let me at this juncture also want to uh, acknowledge Professor Peter Akinshala, uh, Akinshala Okebukola, OFR, sir, you have been a mentor and above all a father, for you have taught and showed me practically to believe in myself and to stand firm on the side of the truth. Sir, you've motivated me from your, uh, from your character and behavior that patience and humility is the key through a successful gateway in life and that continuous hard work, but not unnecessary hard work leads to a fruitful achievement of goals. I have nothing to say that to thank you very immensely for this unqualified love, support, and assistance. Professor Abdullah Ubaadamu, sir, you are unarguably one of the most interesting personalities I've met in my life. You are indeed a mentor to the core, and I really cherish your mentorship and leadership traits. Beyond a shadow of doubt, you are a notable blessing to now our generation and our system of education. You have actually implanted in me a high sense of esteem, shaping my thoughts and belief. So you, re you reignited my interest in IT and I shall forever remain grateful to you for all your help and support towards my career. Finally, sir, I'm proud to call you a teacher, a boss, and most importantly, a father. I wish you very every luck in your endeavors, particularly as this inaugural lecture will be the last that you are cherished as the Vice Chancellor, National Open University of Nigeria. As a matter of fact, this presentation could be regarded as an inaugural lecture for the validatory uh, Vice Chancellor. I most sincerely appreciate you for your faith and belief in me and my capability to, de to deliver results at all times. Professor Vincent Adotenebi, sir, it is your credit that I became a staff of the National Open University of Nigeria when we met some years ago at Ibinator University of Canada, where you came for convocation of that university, when you were the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration at that time. Professor Egoza Osangai, my Vice Chancellor at Ibinator University of Canada, when I serve as the Head of Department of Mass Communication, Professor Osangai, I will ever remain grateful to you. I will ever remain grateful to you. And then, of course, our Emeritus Professor of Now, I will acknowledge the support and advice of two eminent Emeritus Professor of Now. Namely, Olubwe Miro Jagede, our former vice chancellor, and Godwin Sogolo, former council member, they are a source of inspiration to me. Professor Justus Esho Kavusa, you have been a distinguished gentle personality for me, and we have related very well over the years. Professor Oduma Oduma, sir, I have enjoyed your comradeship since your appointment as DVC. Thank you so much. I want to especially thank my registrar, sir Felix Idako Edoka. My boss, sir, Dr. Enes Odega, and Dr. Adam Gambosale. Thank you, sir, for your physical presence. Thank you for your patience and understanding, particularly in attending to issues pertaining to the system brought before your attention, the matured manner with which they are tackled at your council. I want to thank you immensely. Other members of council, I'm also grateful to the full members of the governing council. My own elder brother, Professor E. Oluwabumi Olakpa de Olakpa, a former provost of the College of Medicine, University of Ibadan. I want to thank you for all the support. Professor Abariku and Prof. Uh, Dr. Suleiman Ramon Yusuf, the Deputy Executive Secretary of National Investments Commission, Honorable Silvano Zibogo, and Alhaji Garabasani, all the way from the United Kingdom. I want to thank you for everything. So, included in the list, of course, our internal members in the university here Professor Gregory Okagbare, Professor Grace Jokhtan, Professor Maisi Bandele, Alhaji Yusad Atela, and Mrs. Margaret uh, Titular Mirari. To so my faculty, Dean, 
Professor Samson B. Oshoba, Faculty of Management Sciences. I'm happy to acknowledge your leadership. My colleagues in the Department of Business Administration, and my head of department, Dr. Nenna Chukuma, and then, of course, uh, Dr. Caroline Agedo, and also uh, Dr. Johnson Oku. I want to thank you very much. And then Dr. Ibrahim Gaddafi, Dr. Yunis Adebola, Julius Eyanuku, Jalili, Kayo Dekadu, and many of you that uh, are there. Now to our incoming Vice Chancellor, Professor Femi Peters, I sincerely appreciate your leadership style in all the committees I've served with you over the years. I pray that Almighty Allah will give you the wisdom to lead and take the university to the next level. I also want to acknowledge the deans and directors and then members of the committees that I have chaired. For some of the deans and directors, I want to acknowledge Professor Neba Tanglang and then Professor Godwin Akwe, Pro Professor Akim Tijani, Professor Said Ajibola, Professor Yabo Nwabweze, Professor Patrick Eya, Professor Stanley Ngoa, Professor Shehu Usman, Adamu, and Professor Chedu Mafiana, Professor Uchenna uh, Steve Usuji, Prof, uh, Professor Juliet Nebedion, and of course, my brother, Dr. Moses Shuaiwetila, and on Dr. Ernest Obeji. I want to thank members of the various committees that I have served in the School of Postgraduate Studies, as well as exam misconduct and all that, and then other members. Let me now, at this level, acknowledge my boss, late Professor Abdul Rashidi Yusufu, who was my Dean of the College of Arts and Social Sciences at Benita University of Okada and also my director at the Center of Lifelong Learning when I eventually joined the service of National Open University of Nigeria. May his soul rest in perfect peace. My own supervisors, Professor B. Agbonifo and Professor Marcel Oahahu were my PhD supervisors who led me to the path of success in academics and having interest in marketing. The duo combined with the late Professor Ikechuku Nwosu of the University of Nigeria Enugu Campus. I know that most of the audience that are on virtually will know that, yes, the beginning of IMC in Nigeria as an academic study at that level at the University of Nigeria. And of course, uh, we have Professor Ikechuku Ngosu and then Professor Charles Okibu of the North, uh, North Dakota. And I want to thank you very much. And then, of course, my lecturer, Professor Agua Pala of the late, uh, of the blessed memory, late Dr. Alice Ifezwe, and then Professor Anyafo as well as Professor e Eurum. I also want to thank Professor Egu Egu, the Professor of Psychology of Ebony State University, who has been a very uh, strong guidance to me. And then, of course, Professor Chuks Madrabun. Let me also recognize some of my classmates at the University of Nigeria then. His Excellency, the present governor of Enugu State, Dunu, Dunu of Oba. If I you going, I want to thank you for everything. And then, of course, Dr. Nat as well as Dr. Josie uh, Nkocha. Dr. Nat was our CEC, Commander-in-Chief, and then I was the CGS then. And then I also commend uh, Professor Chooks Madwabun for all his support and all that. He was our Dean of the Faculty. Let me quickly recognize the registry, Mr. John Ubaji, for all the support they've given to me. And then to the, from the School of Postgraduate Studies, I want to thank my people, because in PG school, we operate as a family. We operate as a family. Even when the vassal said that, ah, we are many, then female and all that, we are the family. We try as much as we can to bring the concept of synergy by bringing the strengths and weaknesses together and put it in synergistically so that at the end of the day, we achieve the best for the system. Two names stand out. They are Ali A. Hamza and Linus A. Onime. Both of them were the think tank and main pillars of the School of Postgraduate Studies around who the school revolved. They are inimitably good and have contributed more than the fair share to the modern sources recorded in the school. Their contribution were immeasurable, especially to the establishment of non-business school and the 11 programs that were presented in NUC. The other members of staff that are there, Sandra, Mary, Adama, as well as uh, Nancy, Lovett, Musa, and then uh, Adetutu, Aboje, all of you are indeed wonderful. I also want to thank Dr. Ali Alasa, even though he's now going to head the, 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 the uh, Dawakin Kudu Studies Center, and then Malam Idris Gerba, Timothy Oladako, Iken Chime, and Moni Aja, all of them of the business. So I want to thank you for all your support, too. I cannot forget Benjamin Ape, 
of the director of physical planning of all the staff that, that are there. Harris and Ako, as well as Felix Kassim for all their support. Dr. Ibrahim, Dr. Ibrahim Idris, and of course, my own Islamic teacher, whom if I remove my back here, you see the kind of kid I received when I was reading Quran. I used to do Islamic studies. Malam Buharik Aura was my Islamic teacher in Saifi local government. I learned Quranic during my younger age at Saifi local government, and I thank him for the discipline inculcated in me by him. Of course, my principal there, Malam uh, Mohammed Ba Safi, who incidentally is now the Amy Safi in that area. So I want to thank you for all the support and all that you've done. Then, of course, my brother that we've been there for quite some time, Malam Badamasi Burji, is a friend, brother, and a publisher that I have tremendous respect for over our relationship over the years. I would like to thank the following Abu Bakar Ogashua, Mala Aminu, Peter Oyemi, Dr. Samuel Ono, and of course, the president of BEC, President Mike, I mean, uh, Chief Michael Okereke, I equally need to now at this end, because no matter what, I have to now go back to the other room. And this other room, I want to specially place on record that my wife, Hawa Mandesa Maila, has been a pillar of support for me in my life struggle. She has proved beyond every reasonable doubt that she's a mother, a sister, a confidant, an advisor. I thank her for the love, patience, and support over the years. I also thank my children, Maria Mandesa Maila, Aisha Mandesa Maila, and Abu Bakar Mandesa Maila for giving us joy in the family. Distinguished audience, it is at this level, I will now want to say, I thank you for your patience and understanding, and may God bless you for your patience. Thank you. Wow, uh, thank you very much. Please, let's give another round of applause again. Uh, at a point in time when uh, the inaugural lecturer was uh, reeling out the names from the Southeast, I was thinking he was scheduled for a governorship candidate in 2023. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, the Economy Vice Chancellor is advising that uh, with that quality of names, you should be able to speak some bits of Igbo. <laughs> so for that, let me see. Thank you. Okay, at this very moment, um, the 17th inaugural lecturer, Professor Samaila Mande, will be officially presenting uh, the, the lecture to the Vice Chancellor, National Open University of Nigeria. Yes, yes, yes. It's not just an empty car. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Well, here the lecture. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Professor. Yeah. Congratulations. All right. May we be seated, please? Yeah. Uh, may I at this moment uh, yeah. invite yeah. the yeah. Vice Chancellor by way of recap to deliver his closing remarks, sir? Um, can we give another round of applause to Professor Mande? <laughs> what he has done is to show that not only is he a communicator, but he's also a human being. Uh, I never realized that there are so many people who have affected his life and he has taken time out to acknowledge them. And I think since so this is his moment, this is the best thing that he can do to acknowledge all those people who have uh, played a very, very important role in his life. Uh, I'm a communicator myself, so I'm very, very passionate about the way the topic was uh, somehow or the other shifted towards a global uh, pandemic of COVID-19. Now, what the lecture did was uh, he defined three concepts which combined to make up the topic for his presentation and gave an insightful definition of integrated marketing communication, 
to mean a simple concept which ensures that all form of communications and messages are carefully linked together or integrated all the promotional tools so that they can work together in harmony. A historical recap of the risk emergencies which had occurred in Nigeria included the 2008 global financial crisis, the 2010 emergence of Boko Haram, the 2012 national flood disaster, and the rise in Palmer hardest clashes, the 2020 COVID-19 global pandemic and the impact of COVID-19 on Nigeria. The whole idea behind the integrated market communication is to show how the integrated market communication as a communication tool can be used in order to mediate the conflicts and mitigate the effect of miscommunication about all these disasters. The lecturer discusses IMC and risk communication for COVID-19, enumerating the barriers, theories explored to support the presentation, including social responsibility theory, deb communication theory, social learning theory, public relations excellence theory, uh, risk communication theories and emergencies. He also emphasized the role of social media in Nigeria news and risk communication, as well as the risk communication and community engagement for COVID-19. Very critical about risk, uh, social media because social networks and social media have now become an uh, indelible part of our lives. And therefore they could be used effectively in communicating how to mitigate disasters. The missed doubts and rumors created from COVID-19 pandemic in the world as a whole and in Nigeria in particular were extensively discussed. It is very critical to understand that all these have implication for health because you have anti-vaxxers. There are people who are coming up with anti-vaccine, there is a vaccine, and then there are people who are saying they're anti-vaccine. And you don't know why they're anti-vaccine. They're not scientists, they're not health professionals. They just simply have a certain political economy of doom against the vaccine. So they are called anti-vaxxers. Uh, Integrity communication is a way to defuse the anti-vaxxer syndrome because if the anti-vaxxer syndrome takes over our whole life, then the pandemic will be with us for a very, very long time. The IMC and risk communication and community engagement for COVID-19, especially as the affected control measures and situation analysis therefore were considered from the <clears throat> perspectives of the institution, security agencies and public relations, human rights, and palliative management respectively. The COVID-19 and Nigeria International Relations and the World Health Organization, China and relationship and cooperation with other nations of the world were synergized while the further exploration of, uh, of the place of a post COVID-19 pandemic as it affects economic, social and political orders. Of course, the recommendations were made by the inaugural lecture. Why China? Because the, the, uh, the pandemic seems to have started from China. So China becomes a very, very important focus for, for, for this. But overall, what the lecturer has done is to draw our attention to the critical theories of communication and how these critical theories of communication do not rely on one model, but on multiple models so that collectively we'll be able to uh, look at pandemic, uh, the, the global pandemic from multiple perspectives using various theoretical models, whether they have been developed in developing countries or not, the most important thing is they work and they have been tried and tested and they work. We would like to thank the uh, uh, Professor Mandy for this wonderful thought provoking uh, lecture. The beauty of inaugural lectures is that you are not allowed to ask questions. Uh, otherwise, I would have loved to see a situation where we debate all these things and find out are there any other theories we can come up with that can also explain how we can engage with people about mitigating the effects of COVID-19. There's a lot of misconceptions about it. There's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about it. And nobody knows where this mis misconception is coming up from. And the whole reason for the misconception is loss of, of communication. People are not aware of what they're supposed to do. So once more, Professor Mande, we would like to thank you very much and congratulate you uh, for this wonderful lecture, thought-provoking lecture, just like Professor Femi Peters' uh, lecture that is uh, more encompassing because it deals with social responsibility. It deals with social philosophy and, and, and morality. And uh, I am very excited and, uh, about the fact that we are now moving into a new era of, of uh, inaugural lectures that, that interrogate the society, that interrogates our, our perception of the theoretical models that we have been talking to our students in their application to society. Uh, eight inaugural lectures in five years is quite a lot. And I will wish more inaugural lectures to be done in the next five years. So I'm calling on all the other professors in the university and more professors to come, I can assure you, 
uh, to, to please buckle up and come up and do their own uh, uh, inaugural lecture. I'm sure the incoming Paris Chancellor, Professor Pemi Peters, is ready to facilitate. Even if we are going to do an inaugural lecture once a week, we are ready to do that. After all, we are now in a new normal. It does not cost a lot, but it's up to you, the professors, to come up and uh, give us your own inaugural lectures and make us proud. We would like to thank uh, His Excellency, uh, Dr. Olishegun Obasanjo, for being with us, as well as the Chairman of Council, Professor Peter, I mean, <laughs> Professor uh, uh, Peter Okebukola. Sorry, I added the S, uh, Professor Peter Okebukola, and all the other members of the Council, although I'm not the one to say the uh, final thank you very much. So I would like to thank you very much for being here. And Professor Monday, once more, congratulations for this wonderful lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, sir, uh, for that recap. In a very brief uh, moment, I shall be calling on for his closing remark, uh, the dean, uh, the dean, where uh, Professor uh, Mandi is situated, and that is uh, Dr. Samson Osoba. But uh, very quickly, sir, before you collect the microphone for your vote of thanks, let me very expressly recognize um, Professor Nabath Tanglang uh, online, uh, Professor Rotimi Ogidon, uh, Dr. Ganiet Adeshina Othman, uh, Professor A.A. A. Aminu, uh, Professor Kuta Yahaya, Dr. Abdullahi Araga, Dr. David Ogbo, and Dr. Funke Apata, among a lot of our virtual audience uh, who have been uh, holding on online for long to be part of this history making event. At this very moment, let me very quickly invite you, Dr. Osoba, for your vote of thanks. Thank you very much. The gentleman has been able to reduce my assignment to minimize the time. At this junction, let me clearly appreciate the guest lecturer, uh, Professor Mande. Uh, Professor Mande happened to be the first professor from Faculty of Management Sciences, National Open University of Nigeria. And also, <laughs> Professor Mande is also the first professor from our own faculty to deliver his own uh, inaugural lecture today. Congratulations, sir. At this juncture, I want to thank the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief Ulshe Gobasojo Jisue. Thank you very much, sir. And also, I want to appreciate our uh, Prussian Salon, uh, distinguished professor, Okebukola Oevar. Thank you very much, sir. At this level, too, I want to appreciate uh, the uh, Vice Chancellor, double professor, our uh, father. Uh, who have given us an, what to call exceptional leadership, also providing the infrastructure and human development to National University. All these achievements, we are going to remember it. It will go on in our mind to appreciate him whenever we are going, sir. We wish you the best of luck, sir. At this level, we want to appreciate our incoming vice chancellor, law, uh, Professor uh, Femi Peters, and also the, all the business officers in the university. Uh, uh, DVC Ak Akai, uh, Professor Iduma, uh, DVC Admin, Professor Shokafun, the Bossa, Dr. Dr. Odega, and the Liberian, Dr. Sale uh, Gambo. At this level, too, I want to appreciate the former Finance Chancellor, Professor Fizet Tanebe, Professor Joy Yisi, Professor Grace Jotan, Professor Kuta, Dr. Ganias, and others. There are numerous to measure. And last not the least, all the staff and the students of National Open University I want to thank you sincerely. And before I drop this microphone, I want to appreciate the Directorate of uh, uh, Under the Leadership of uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Adichino. I want to appreciate you for providing this uh, opportunity to us to join us online to, to listen to this uh, uh, lecture. At this level, those who are their name are yet to be mentioned. I want to thank Sally for your listening and your attention. God bless you all. Uh, thank you for that wrap. And, that's, and that brings us to the end of our proceedings here. Um, 
chronicling the end of the 17th inaugural lecture of the National Open University of Nigeria has been explicitly, uh, explicitly carried out by Professor Samaila Mandi. At this very moment, may I ask that we all rise, please, for the NOUN anthem to be followed by the national anthem. Thank you for being part of this uh, special history. And without any wastage of time, the academic procession will file out in a reverse order. Filing out is the academic procession. Uh, let me at this time take this opportunity to thank former president and Commander-in-Chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, Chief Dr. Olushogun Obasanjo, GCFR, for being part of this event. Let me also thank the Chairman, the Pro-Chancellor and Chairman Council of the National Open University of Nigeria, Distinguished Professor Peter Okebukola, OFR, and your team of council. Let me also recognize the Pro Chancellor, Chairman Council, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ibadan, for joining us today. Permit me to very expressly recognize the Deputy Vice Chancellors, National Open University of Nigeria, Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, the Buster the Registrar, the Liberian, and of course, Sir Felix Edoka, KSM, the Registrar of the National Open University of Nigeria. Let me want to thank deans, directors, members of the academic community, former vice chancellors of the National Open University of Nigeria, friends, family members, and colleagues of the 17th inaugural lecturer for being part of history. 
Let me also thank especially the Directorate of Media and Publicity of the National Open University of Nigeria, ably led by Malam Ibrahim Sheme for the wonderful work so far done in reaching you especially. Let me also uh, recognize especially the leadership of the Directorate of Learning Content Management System under Dr. Adewale Adeshina for making sure that we reach out to friends of the National Open University of Nigeria, breaking boundaries and wherever they are. On behalf of all and sundry, my name is Ambrose Bernard Gowong. Thank you for this part of for being part of this history, and we urge you to join us in uh, about 20 minutes from now when there will be a valedictory lecture in honor of the Vice Chancellor. Uh, our going Vice Chancellor, National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Abdullah Uba Adamu, and that will be championed by Professor Tijani Ibikule in a while from now. Until then, my name is Ambrose Bernard Gowong, saying so long. <laughs>